Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to do a little experiment. We're going to test one of the theories known as the core accretion model theory in trying to create a gas giant. So the way we're going to do this is actually, well, let me show you what I've already been kind of working on and creating here. This is my uh, fourth simulation. I've been running this for approximately 11 hours. I basically just went to bed, came back and just to see what's happening here. And this is what I've been able to create after it says in game of 27.4 years, but basically um, quite a lot of revolutions of various objects. So um, when I started, what I did is I put the star, the sun in the middle, and then I put a bunch of material in a very, very thin ring around it. There was some hydrogen, uh, there was also some um, rocky materials like silicates and some metals. And when I basically kind of came back, this is what I had. There were four major objects. These were actually uh, initially much smaller. Um, and then there was a bunch of gas that you can see orbiting around here, although it's a little bit slower than it used to be. Um, and all of this kind of developed into this very premature, but very interesting looking star system, kind of similar to actually, well, not our own solar system, interestingly, but the vast majority of star systems we've been finding around other parts of our galaxy. Now, um, what's interesting here is that uh, pretty much every major planet that was uh, created from this model or from this simulation kind of resembles planets we've discovered. Um, well, at least in terms of mass and composition. So uh, the four planets we have here that used to be tiny, tiny rocks have now um, became these relatively major, uh, or I guess somewhat major super Earths, which are very, very common planets in other star systems and um, sub Saturns. So we have this object that's about 10 masses of Earth. This is a typical super Earth. We have this object that's about 26 um, masses of Earth, so this is more like a Neptune-like planet. And then we have these two other objects that are um, typical sub-Saturns, so around 40 masses of Earth. All of this was done completely by accident, and it just so happens that every time I run these simulations, I always get these planets. Which actually kind of makes you think, so how come we don't really have these sub-Saturns about which I briefly talked about um, in one of the previous videos, don't really exist in our solar system. So there's something strange going on there. So what I wanted to do is let's do this again from scratch. We're going to try to run this together. I'm going to show you how I did all of this. So you can try this yourself as well if you have Universe Sandbox. And um, it's a pretty cool simulation. It's actually um, a really good way of seeing how the star systems or solar systems are actually made. I'm going to make background a little bit darker here so it's actually easier to see. Uh, let's maybe go for uh, this grayish material. Uh, let's start with basically just placing the sun in the middle. And then the way I usually start this is by creating a ring of material. In this case, we're going to start with hydrogen and uh, basically gases like helium and stuff. By clicking on the ring button here, and I'm going to choose, uh, let's just choose Saturn or something. And here, what we need to do is I'm going to only make about 2000 particles just to save my computer some uh, processing power. Uh, we're also going to make mass. Um, let's do approximately one and a half Jupiters, which is kind of um, in some sense realistic to what we have in our own solar system in terms of the amount of hydrogen and helium that's not inside the sun. And then we're going to change the texture. Uh, texture here is going to be, I don't know, like what's easy to see against this, like greenish. I think this should be pretty easy to see. And lastly, the distance from the sun. Uh, I'm going to place this a little bit closer than it, it is in real life at a distance of about 1.19 AU to approximately um, 0.21 AU. And so what we're going to create here is something that looks like this. Hopefully it's easy to see. There's that ring. Uh, it's basically this green formation where I now I'm going to place uh, tiny objects that will hopefully become planets. Each of these objects is actually already pretty massive. It's uh, It says like what? 19 moons in mass. So basically these are um, relatively large pieces of ice. Uh, in real life, it would be much smaller, but uh, because we don't have a supercomputer, we'll have to deal with this. And now let's add another thing here. So this time is going to be actual planet-like objects. We're going to choose maybe, let's say this time I'm going to go for five objects um, with a total mass of about two masses of Earth. We're going to make sure that we check this bodies instead of um, particles. And we're going to just place them at the same distance, but this time right in the middle of this, uh, at a distance of about 0.2 
AU. And here we're going to do the same 0.2 AU. And so as soon as I click this, they should have been placed right in the ring. So now I can actually just remove all of this. So there are the objects. There's five of them. They're all kind of randomly distributed. They're not equally distributed. And so if we actually zoom into one of them right now, what we'll start seeing is that a lot of this material will slowly start um, coming closer and closer to our moon-like object. So this is basically a protoplanet in this sense. Um, it's only um, a little bit more massive than the chunks, but altogether it will actually start forming into a larger and larger body as all of these pieces slowly start attracting each other. So this is what we refer to as the core accretion model. Basically, it starts with a relatively large rocky core that starts attracting these other pieces that are usually made out of ice. Now, we'll probably have to wait a little before some of them actually make it close enough, but there, there comes the first one, I think. And you can actually kind of see how as soon as it collides with this object, right around, oh, it missed. No, nope. we just created a tiny green moon of the moon. That's actually very unusual. But there's the first uh, piece. So um, as soon as this happens, this object will start growing. And this growth will actually be really, really fast at first. And this is what we think happened to objects like Jupiter and Saturn. They grew really fast, really quickly, because they absorbed a tremendous amount of materials really fast. Now, right now, the mass is already over one masses of Earth. And you'll actually see um, all of these five objects growing pretty quickly. The easiest way to see them grow is actually by going in here in the chart and then just kind of zooming in onto the objects. I'm going to zoom in here so it's a little bit easier to see. So let's just click on this. And now watch how they basically start growing um, pretty much instantly. And now this is only like not even a day. Uh, no, sorry. This is 34 days later. Uh, this is not even a year yet. And they'll grow exponentially fast. So um, here, this is the accretion model, the core accretion model in action. All of these objects will start growing faster, faster, bigger, more massive, until at some point they reach their limit where the amount of material present is just not enough for them to grow really fast. And so they'll actually kind of maintain the uh, size. Now here, the mass of the largest object so far is already at 10 masses of Earth. So this is already a super Earth. And this only took 100 days after the creation of the star system. So let's just kind of like wait and see. But also I want to show you how all of this looks like from the top, because as soon as these objects start getting more massive, they also start interacting with each other. And usually what happens is that there is one object that becomes more massive and starts dominating the whole system. This is kind of like the equivalent of Jupiter. And uh, let's see who becomes Jupiter this time. So I'm going to run this maybe a little bit faster until the system starts to look a little bit differently. Also, I just realized it's really hard to see the green against the gray. I made a mistake with the color here. So let's just go for a typical star uh, background. So as you can see, our ring that was very tight at first is now looking more and more like an actual asteroid belt. And a lot of these pieces actually got, get flung out by the planetary objects far, far, far away. And what's interesting is even though initially all of this was in the same plane, in other words, it was basically just very flat, um, the more you wait, the more uh, inclined things will become. You'll see this maybe after a few minutes. So as all of the system here evolves, all of these things will actually start changing and looking more and more like the actual solar system that we have in real life. So let me just kind of like run through this. And uh, we'll wait, we'll actually skip this for maybe a few in-game years. It's currently at one and a half years. And uh, mostly because it's actually going to start slowing down a little bit as it does all of these calculations. Oh, and while we're waiting, one more thing I wanted to actually um, show you is that notice how these objects also start approaching each other. And this is when usually the planetary collisions happen as well. So some of these objects might end up colliding with one another because in order for them to actually have a very stable orbit in the same region of space, they have to be spaced out very precisely. They either have to be in the so-called Lagrange points, uh, which are usually about 60 degrees apart, or um, they have to be spaced out equally. But because they were kind of randomly spaced out, uh, and because the, their mass started to change as well, at some point, this is going to be a very unstable system with some objects colliding, but some other 
planetary objects may be kicking each other out. And this is what we think happened with Jupiter uh, becoming dominant and basically kicking, kicking out uh, Neptune and Uranus from uh, their original orbit. All right, so let's see what happened after five years of the simulation here. This is obviously in-game five years, not real five years. Um, but let's start with orbits. So as you can see, some of the objects are still in the same sort of position, but at least one of them has been shifted. It's this one here. Um, and this is actually not the most massive object. So this would be this would be in the equivalent of like Saturn or something in our own solar system. Um, but let's actually also see what uh, these objects look like in terms of both the appearance and mass. Okay, so first of all, it looks like one of the objects just got swallowed. There used to be five, if you remember. Now there's only four. And there's a very, very large collision spot that's present on the most massive of these objects. And that's our Saturn right here. So this equivalent of the Saturn planet has now actually absorbed one of the larger planets. And its total mass is 115 masses of Earth. It's basically a little bit more massive than Saturn, which is about, um, I think it's like 95 masses. Um, but about third of the mass of Jupiter. Then we have our second most massive object at 60 masses of Earth. Then we have something that's 56 and something that's uh, just over 50. So these three are more or less sub-Saturns, but this one has now officially become a Saturn-like object. Although technically this is the most massive um, gas giant, so this would be now the major influencer in this particular star system. And the fact that it actually swallowed one of the planets uh, makes this uh, more of a proof that it's basically the most influential and the most massive object. If I run this even longer, eventually it will actually start influencing the orbits of other planets to the point where they'll actually uh, have a resonance or end up falling um, into the star, falling into the actual planet, or being kicked out completely. It would obviously take um, possibly like a week of me running this simulation uh, because we want to reach at least like a million year period here of uh, in-game years. Uh, but eventually it would actually happen. The resonance is a very real phenomenon that usually happens when you run a simulation long enough. The other thing I actually wanted to show you is that some um, parts here, some objects, had their orbit influence so much that now they're orbiting against the flow. Like there's a piece right here that's actually flying against the flow. And that's because it passed by one of the planets and its orbit has been changed completely. So it has a retrograde orbit. There are also pieces that are obviously not in the same inclination anymore. And you can see some of them actually stick out from the plane of orbit. This will become even more extreme with time. And all of this is because these planets will now start shuffling things around. They'll start, uh, if not absorbing these um, pieces of ice, then kicking them out or uh, making them obey the whole resonance of orbit rule. And so our solar system is actually a really good example of how things look like after billions of years when things stabilize. But our system, our solar system, um, as I mentioned in many previous videos, is it's actually really weird. It's super strange. The planets that we have in our own solar system are very rare and very unusual compared to other star systems. What I've created here is more or less typical. You always have these uh, sub-Saturns, which are objects like this, maybe about uh, 20 to about uh, 90 masses of, of Earth. You always have Saturn-like objects, or usually. Uh, sometimes you have really massive planets like Jupiter, sometimes you have even more massive planets, but they're also very rare. For the most part, the most common planets are either sub-Saturns or super-Earths, basically planets that are about 10 to maybe about 50 masses of Earth. So what we have here is basically your average typical star system, although not really stable yet because the orbits are still changing. Um, but at some point, it will become something that we actually see everywhere in the galaxy. So this simulation is really awesome. It's actually a really good way of seeing the core accretion model in, um, in action, how basically a, a single piece of rock then becomes a very massive piece of rock and then kind of start, stops growing as fast and sort of slowly just stabilizes the system. Um, but at the same time, what's really interesting here is that creating our solar system is really challenging. It's, it's something that I was never able to, to do. Um, no matter how hard you try, you need to actually cause major disasters for this system to look like our solar system. 
first of all, the super Earths, like the uh, planets that are maybe a little bit more massive than Neptune, although I think this one is a little bit too massive for that, uh, need to collide and create terrestrial planets. This is one thing that we think happened in our own solar system. On the other hand, uh, Jupiter has to actually kick out other objects into the outskirts of their current uh, orbits. And lastly, uh, we need to possibly lose a few planets that exist here one way or another, either, either by colliding it with the Sun, or by colliding with, with other planets, or by basically kicking it out. So um, maybe a long time ago, our solar system actually looked very similar to this, but over time, due to some unpredictable disasters and unusual events, it changed dramatically. And so now, unlike in other star systems, we seem to have these very unusual four terrestrial planets, Earth, um, Mars, Venus, and Mercury, and um, we also have gas giants and ice giants that are kind of in the wrong position, in the wrong, or not in the wrong, but in an unusual position. Because in most star systems, where, uh, where we usually see those objects are much closer to their um, star. We do have some planets that are as far away as Neptune and Uranus, and obviously as far away as Jupiter, but it's a lot more rare than seeing a, a, a giant, a gas giant, like here, very close to the sun. So, yeah, so there you go. I actually recommend you try this yourself and uh, post a comment below, let me know what you actually got. If you were able to create um, Earth-like planets or if you were able to create a huge Jupiter, um, let us know how you did it. If you have Universe Sandbox, this is something that I highly recommend you try. It's a super fun activity to see how the actual star systems grow. On the other hand, I think you do actually need a pretty powerful computer for this to run uh, without interruptions because even on my computer, if I actually run this fast enough, it starts getting really slow. So maybe just maybe this is not something that is good for your CPU. But then again, I don't always do the best things for my CPU. Well, that's kind of all I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to experiment a little bit with Universe Sandbox and see what I can create, if I can actually create a Jupiter-like object. And from what I've seen so far, I'm able to create a large, massive um, Saturn-like object, but not really Jupiter. And uh, in this particular case, I'll look at that, uh, orbit just changed dramatically again. In this particular case, I think the highest mass I was able to create stands at 128 masses of Earth. Uh, although maybe, just maybe, I'll run this a little bit longer just to see if it can get even more massive. Uh, but for now, I think that's it. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned a little bit more. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow, we created a binary system. Um, hopefully now you'll learn a little bit more about the star systems that we have in the galaxy and also our own solar system as well. In short, our own solar system is really weird. And wow, that's very unusual. I've created a binary system. Oh, and now it's not a binary system anymore. Now it's um, nothing. It was sold by the sun. Well, that escalated pretty quickly. Uh, the binary planetary system that I was able to create temporarily um, ended up colliding with each other and has now become part of the sun in the middle. Now, we think our sun actually did swallow a lot of planets, but this was very, very unusual and very rare. But on the other hand, my Jupiter is still there, and so is my other um, sub-Saturn-like object. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.